Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for coming uh, to this webinar. And especially thank you to people that I've seen four or five times today on webinars. So thank you for that. Um, just uh, going to introduce Rachel for those of you that don't know. Um, Rachel joined the central team on Monday um, to try and add some capacity into our um, distance learning provision and also our wider uh, use of technology to enhance learning. Um, Rachel, do you just want to do a quick summary of your background, et cetera, and then leave Flipgrid to you? Yeah, thank you. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, I'm originally from Australia. Sorry for those that have <laughs> heard this a couple of times now. Um, I was a classroom teacher uh, in year two for two years there, and then came over uh, and was teaching computing as well as digital learning um, across early years to year eight as well. Uh, so I'm going to be taking you through Flipgrid uh, today. Um, so we'll go through some sort of ideas where you can get started, um, how you can easily embed these into your lessons, um, and then just some sort of other ones to sort of think not just during distance learning, but also going beyond um, heading back, hopefully into the classroom at some point as well. Um, so if you didn't know, um, Flipgrid is all about empowering student voice um, and this sort of shows you that same grid interface on the side here um, about how Flipgrid works. Um, so Flipgrid's mission is to empower every learner on the planet to share their voice, um, respect the diverse voices of others. Um, one of the big benefits um, of Flipgrid is that um, students don't have to have their face um, on the camera um, and that it's gone from simply just being a option to be able to get students to record their voices to also being able to um, have students to record their screens um, as well as to pixelate their image so that that image isn't there as well. Um, feel free if you have any questions um, during the webinar to um, ask as well. Um, so what is it? So Flipgrid's really simple to use. And I think that's one of the big benefits um, of making it one of those um, ready to use materials um, and tools that you rely on in the classroom. Um, it engages and empowers all students um, to record and share short videos uh, together. Um, and you'll see here that um, the videos, I should add in there that those videos can be recorded uh, for up to 10 minutes now in length. Um, so they're much longer, um, which means that there's a whole range of different ideas that you can get uh, for students to use there as well. Um, so the students aren't limited um, in that aspect. Um, you can moderate those videos as well. So I'll show you just how easy it is to moderate those videos. Um, and as I mentioned before, that you can have um, students use that interactive whiteboard that's there as well. Um, and there's also lots of video content um, and topics that are available in the Disco library. Uh, and I'll point to that uh, sort of after we've had a chance at getting on. Um, so this is just to show you really quickly what it looks like. Um, from being able to set it up. So once the grid is set up, so this is essentially your grid and that's where your students will respond to. Um, so once the grid's created, uh, it's very easy to then get the students to respond. Um, you can add a range of different topics, ideas for them to respond to. Um, and as I mentioned, there's lots of themes already available to use. Um, and then the students simply respond and they just tap on the green plus to add their response. And you can see here that there's a whole range of being able to pixelate faces um, as well as adding in any text. Um, you'll also see that you've got that whiteboard as well. So you don't actually have to record your face uh, when you record those videos as well. Um, and then to use Flipgrid, it's nice and easy, just four simple steps. So first thing is just simply signing up as a teacher and then creating a grid, adding in the topic that you want to. So your grid essentially becomes your class uh, and then your topics is almost your assignment for each uh, lesson there. And then you simply just share it. And once that's been shared once, your students will always have access uh, to be able to go in um, and add content there. Um, but equally, you can moderate that content uh, to limit responses, but also if you want to make sure that those videos that students are sharing uh, are acceptable um, and okay to use. 
Um, so I'm going to jump into using Flipgrid now. So hopefully you'll be able to see my screen there. Perfect. Um, so this just shows you here what it looks like when you go on as a teacher. And I'm going to get you to join my Flipgrid um, in a moment. But just to sort of show you through um, the content here. Um, so this is the one that I'll get you to be using today. Um, but Graham's very kindly shared through um, some of his flip grids that he's used with other students. Um, so again, any of these grids, I can tap on to open them up. And you'll see here that when I do that, there is those topics that are created there. So I can see here that there's a book review. Um, so Graham set up, um, popped in the image of the book at the top there and then added in those response questions that he's looking for the students to respond to. So what was your first impression of the cover? Who are the main characters? What has happened so far? And who do you think, what do you think, sorry, will happen next? And then you'll see underneath all of the responses uh, that have taken place. So I can go through and I can easily select a student's response um, and then view those there. Um, and I can see how many times a student's response has been viewed. Uh, so this can be always really helpful to know, um, as well as being able to um, hide the response if I need to, as well as share it. So if I wanted to share a particular response, um, and I can also download their video. Uh, so if I want to have all of them in one location, that's always really helpful. So just to come back to my grid here, I'm going to go on to our Leo flip grid for the day um, and I'm simply going to share it. So this is the part that when I want my um, students to take place um, within my flip grid, um, I simply have to share it. Um, but I'm going to go through setting up a topic first. So you'll notice that the first thing once you create a new grid is that it will always come up with a ready-made template for you to use. So you can obviously go in um, and edit this if you want to. So this is just simply a hello on Flipgrid task, um, but you might actually like to either delete it or go and um, customize your own. So I'm simply just gonna go ahead and add a new topic to show you. Um, and once that topic's there, I can give it a title. Um, and I can set a recording time if I want to. So I'm just going to simply do one minute um, and I can put in some prompts. So I can say, forward and then underneath I can simply use record a video if I want to um, so I can give that focus to them if I need um, but I'm just going to come back for a second here we go and then I can put in a response if I wanted to um, otherwise I can just leave it as is. Oh, that's just deleted my prompt there. Let's try again. Uh, so working from home, just quickly change that. And then I can simply go ahead and create the topic. And then that is then ready to share. So you'll notice that I can easily copy that topic um, and I can also share to Classroom. So this is a nice way to be able to easily share that out to Google Classroom. So I can go ahead and tap onto it and then select my classroom if I want to. But I'm simply gonna copy that um, and I'm gonna pop that link into the chat for you all. So if you'd like to go ahead um, and open that up, 
Um, but I'm going to model sort of how you can go ahead um, and add a response. So you'll see down the bottom here, just simply tap on record a response and that's going to come up. And then I've got a couple of options down the bottom here. So I've got my filters across the um, side here. So if I want to put a filter on, if I want to pixel out my face so you can't see me, I can do that as well. Or if I simply don't want a filter, um, I can also add in some stickers. So often um, some students won't want to have their face shown on camera. So they can simply pop an emoji over the top and they can talk through if they want to. Equally, they can pin those around the side. Um, they could add any text on the screen as well. And again, I can then move that and resize it and position it to where I want so I can add that text on my response as well. Um, you'll see as well that you have the ability just to simply draw across the top. Um, and you also have a whiteboard. So if you want to either use the blackboard or whiteboard, you can do that to do a response rather than simply just record your voice. Um, and you also have the ability to add in sort of a custom sticker, um, so a photo if you wanted to. And then you just record. One of the advantages of working from home is being able to work the hours that I want to. Um, one of the disadvantages is that I'm constantly behind a screen all day. Um, and something that I'm looking forward to is getting, uh, getting back to school to actually properly meet you all in person. And then once I'm happy, I can then simply tap on next and next again. And then it will always ask you to take a selfie to submit your video. And again, equally here, you still get those options to go ahead and add in a sticker, add in any text as well. So I could use this moment to simply use um, the whiteboard there um, and add in some text. So I might just pop my name in for this one um, and use a emoji. And then I simply tap on next. And that video is then going to ask me to put in my name and I can give it a title if I wanted to. Um, otherwise, I just simply tap on submit video and press complete. So if you haven't already, I'd love you to go now and post your working from home benefits or disadvantages um, and then something you're looking forward to when all of this is over onto that flip grid.
Have you all been able to get on to Flipgrid? There we go. So I can see now that Graham's responded uh, to my Flipgrid there. And you'll notice that once those responses come through that um, I can add in any video feedback to give um, to Graham on the side here so I can add specific feedback um, so I can actually go and give my own video feedback to Graham specifically um, on there um, and I can also give specific feedback um, in terms of a marketing rubric um, on his ideas or performance um, and you'll notice that you have that ability to set up um, a rubric as well so that um, when you're setting a task uh, on Flipgrid you can make sure the specific responses that come through and you also have that ability to add in any specific uh, comments about it um, and then you can share that um, direct link feedback um, so that they can view it as well. So I can start to see those responses coming in, which is fantastic. Um, so this is a really nice way to be able to see those responses that students uh, are making. Um, but also the sort of ideas around Flipgrid um, are only limited by sort of the responses that you can think of. Um, as again, having that topic focus can be a really nice way to sort of think about what it is that you're um, guiding the students to do when they record their responses. You'll notice that when I tap on um, to view the advanced options within the Flipgrid when I set it up, um, that I can add an attachment as well. So if I want them to focus on a particular thing, so I might give them a set of instructions that they need to include when they record their Flipgrid, then I can do that just simply adding the link to the Google Doc in here. Um, and sort of it's worth mentioning as well that all of those videos can be moderated as well, which means that students won't be able to see them until you've activated those videos there. Um, and you can also allow student to student replies. This means that students can reply to each other via video. Um, and again, that can be turned on or off. Um, and again, you can either make that specific topic frozen, which means they can only view it rather than active where they're able to record those videos, um, as well as hiding that particular topic as well. And you can also set a um, launch date and a freeze date. The freeze date just essentially means that um, that will be the last point that they can actually upload those. So in a similar way to Google Classroom uh, with a submission date on an assignment, you can do that exactly the same through Flipgrid as well here. Um, and then within the video features, you'll see that you can either decide to have selfie and videos, um, just selfies, just videos um, or nothing there. Um, as well, you can turn on uh, that the students can trim it and rearrange video clips when they're recording, um, as well as putting in titles, video counts, so being able to display how many times a video has been viewed as well, um, adding sticky notes on their videos. Um, and again, a crucial one, especially when we think about digital citizenship, um, being able to like other students' videos. Um, we want to talk about that aspect as well. Um, and then again, that ability to attach links is there as well. 
And you'll notice now that there that option for feedback is available as well. So you'll see that when I tapped onto Graham's video before uh, that I've got that option to give feedback. Um, I can also give specific custom feedback. So if I wanna give them a rubric um, on how I'm going to give them a specific grade based on their response, I can do that there and I can set up the same criteria uh, in a similar way to setting up a rubric uh, on Classroom as well. So that's always a really handy feature there. Um, and again, I can just update that topic if I want to, um, but I'm just gonna come back um, and click cancel. So I can see those responses there. Um, and again, I've got that option to share the link to um, one of my students' particular uh, responses, um, but I've also got those options to edit their response, hide it, um, and I can also move those responses if I wanted to. So if, for example, um, my student had was had responded to the wrong class, uh, then I can use that option there uh, to move it. So that's always a handy feature to have there. Um, and again, you've got that ability to move those responses around just by dragging and dropping those, those there. Um, so if I come back to my Flipgrid now, um, you'll see that I've got those two topics there. Um, so it's really easy. Anytime that I want to set up a new topic, just go through that add new topic option there. Um, what's also nice is that if you're um, working with lots of teachers um, or you want to have other people that can add uh, to be co-pilots, which means they're able to view that content, um, you simply add a co-pilot. Uh, so for example, I might like to add in Graham and I've forgotten what your email is, Graham, um, but I can easily just pop in Graham's email in there and then tap on invite um, so I can do that there and they've got access to be able to do that there. You'll see as well for students when they join um, Flipgrid that all they need to actually access that Flipgrid code um, is using that there. So if I go ahead and tap onto it, you'll see that this will show me what it looks like as a student. So that's what it'll look like when a student goes on rather than as a teacher as well. Um, and you'll see that underneath, you do have that immersive reader so that can actually read out all of those responses as well. So for younger students, that is always a brilliant option to have um, as well. Um, so I'm gonna jump back to my slide deck for a second um, and just share some ideas with you. Um, so Isabel just asked, do students need to make an account? They don't need to make an account. Um, so that's really helpful. So I'm just gonna jump back in here uh, very quickly and just talk through um, when you set up a grid. Uh, so when I set up a grid, you've, you have to give it a name first. So classroom training, and then you'll see here your different options. Um, because you've got Google accounts, then you can just set up using school email. This makes it sure that the grid um, is protected so that the students have to be signed in using their Google um, email to log in. Um, I just kept it public, so you only needed a link to join today to make it easier. Um, and then again, I've got that option to customize that Flipgrid code at the bottom here, I'm just going to leave that as is for now. And then I simply tap on next and you'll see here that it gives that option to enter in the school email address. Um, I'm not sure, I'm assuming Graham that the email is exactly the same as the our one. Uh, yeah, so I'm actually on two hangouts at the same time and it's really hard, uh, but yeah, it is at Leo Academy Trust across the board. Yeah, perfect, thank you, sorry. And then simply I just tap on next and then that grid is then set up. Um, so all a student would need to do, so if I just open up uh, a new incognito window just to show you, um, they would go to that link there and this is what they would be directed to do and that's then where they'd be requested to log in um, using their Google account there.
Um, so I'm going to jump back into my slide deck just to sort of talk through some different ideas. Um, so I'll share this out um, at the end as well so they've got access to it. Um, but this is just 25 different um, ideas about how you could use Flipgrid. So you could set up um, a reading response, so getting the students to uh, reflect on a book that they've been reading um, and to share those responses. You may even like to do sort of a book talk and get students to do a 30 second share uh, on their favorite book um, and maybe why someone should be reading that book now, um, as well as using it uh, for an exit ticket after a lesson um, or to reflect on something that they've learned uh, during the day. Um, so I won't go through all of these, but hopefully this just helps uh, give you an idea um, of how, um, the, how big the range is of ideas that are there. Obviously, having that ability to use that whiteboard um, and to be able to take photos also means that students can then um, be modeling a maths lesson um, with manipulatives at home. So they could maybe go and gather some toys and, and model a concept that way. Um, or even you could get them doing um, a recording of a cooking lesson maybe at home so you could um, set them an instruction so for example um, uh, Anzac Day is coming up in Australia so one of the things uh, that we'd usually be doing at this time is uh, teaching students how to make Anzac biscuits so you might model that uh, to them uh, and then share the recipe and ask them to actually do a flip grid response of them uh, recording themselves making some Anzac biscuits as just an example there. Uh, and then for PE, you could even show them um, some certain skills on throwing and catching, um, as well as a, um, a really nice way to celebrate birthdays um, in the classroom or even student of the week as well. So you can get students to sort of do a special message uh, to wish someone happy birthday. This is something that I've been doing um, with my PLN. So um, my friends that I've made um, just on Twitter, um, we celebrate each other's birthdays by responding to a Flipgrid. And it's a really nice way uh, to be able to respond and um, share and celebrate our birthdays uh, whilst we can't do that because we're sort of all across the world celebrating <clears throat> in different time zones as well. Um, so again, um, the Flipgrid promotes those five C's, that ability to communicate, uh, collaborate. So you can even, uh, and one of the really cool ideas that I saw recently uh, was getting students to respond to a story prompt uh, and that each student needed to respond to the student's post before them. So the teacher would start, for example, saying, once upon a time, there was a frog that lived by the river. And that would be their sort of initial response. And then the next person that comes on and views the flip grid then records themselves telling the next part of the story. And each time each response is made, the students need to go back and rewatch those previous videos before then creating their response. So ultimately you then build up and you have an entire story told. Uh, so that's sort of a nice, interesting way to be able to do that. And obviously, if you moderate those videos as well, it means that you've got that consistency uh, in that you know that the students aren't going to be perhaps re responding all at once. And as well as I mentioned, that digital citizenship uh, in terms of making sure you do moderate those videos um, or if you're giving uh, that option for those videos to be live once the students have posted them, that they can see each other's responses, but also that you talked uh, to your students about what that looks like and how you actually go about setting that up um, as well. Um, so it's worth noting that there is a Flipgrid Disco Library, and I'm going to jump into this to show you that now. So you'll notice that across the top here um, that I've got Disco Library. So if I'm really struggling to think uh, of a good idea that I could set uh, for my students, then I can go into that Disco Library here. And you'll notice as well uh, that there's a whole range of different ideas, conversation starters, um, there are flocabulary. Um, so from Nearpod, there's code. Uh, so there's lots of different ideas that come through here as well as that option to be able to search through those topics there. Uh, so for example, if I just go on to learning from home, 
Um, you'll see here that there's some really great ones. Uh, for example, a would you rather task. Um, and there's some prompts here. So choose an option from the emoji list below, make your choice and defend it. So then creating that response there. And you'll see here that the goal for this topic is to help you develop oral language skills. So especially for uh, younger students, this is a brilliant way to be able to do that. And all of these responses can then simply just be added directly to your Flipgrid just by tapping onto it and selecting add. So when I do that, that response will give me the option to make any changes. So for example, I might like to cap that recording time to 45 seconds so that my students aren't uh, going to be spending ages recording that video there. Uh, and then here I can set up those options there. So would you rather find a unicorn or find a genie, be a dancer or a singer? Um, so ride a scooter or ride a bike. So I can pop in all those options. Uh, and then I might like to change the goal if I wanted to make any changes. Um, and again, I can add in a different focus. It's just sort of an image response that'll come up. Um, and then again, if there's any other links or things that I want to put in, otherwise I can simply just press the X to delete that. Um, and again, I can either turn on video moderation, allow student to student responses. Uh, so then all I need to do is tap update topic. And you'll now see that that response has appeared in there. So again, if I come back to that flip grid um, and if I view it from a student side now, um, you'll see that that response has then come up. Um, and then to go ahead and add a response, you simply tap on that green plus to go and record a response um, and it'll get you to make sure you're logged in. And then simply go ahead um, and record your screen there. And again, I can equally switch between those topics just here. So I can always switch between those topics there uh, within Flipgrid. So the Disco Library is a nice way to be able to access any of that content that's available um, and use other teachers' ideas that are already created for you and then obviously just tweak or customise it uh, to make it a little bit more relevant to your class uh, or even just to sort of use that as a main prompt for getting started. Um, I always bring this in um, just to mention that the very first time your students will use Flipgrid, um, like with any new tool that we introduce, um, it's always important that we go through uh, our rules or expectations um, in the same way that you do with your class. Uh, and we know that how important that is for them to actually establish that routine and those expectations. Um, so this is always just a nice response um, to do as that first one to think about, okay, how are we going to make sure uh, that we set up those expectations first uh, before we start recording um, there. Um, now, whilst that moderation is an option, I always think that we still want to be allowing our students to respond and to be able to see each other's responses. It might be that you choose to use Flipgrid as a morning check-in or a weekly check-in with your students. So you might actually like to make sure that students can't see each other's videos as well. Uh, and that's a really nice way um, so that they know that they can respond to you um, without anyone else seeing those videos as well. Um, and then also just sort of going, going to share some sort of ideas besides just simply teaching online, because we're always thinking bigger than right now, um, is that one of the nice things that you can do in Flipgrid is use Flipgrid AR. Um, and what this allows you to do um, is allows you to print a QR code um, from a student's response, and then that student response will suddenly appear um, wherever you are. So for example, if you had this Flipgrid uh, QR code uh, on your desk, 
then you could simply scan it using your device and that response would instantly come up. Um, so when we think about going into the classroom, you could actually set these up um, with your instructions, with your responses and have those displayed for students to use. So it's a nice way to sort of bring that interactiveness um, in as well. And another thing to sort of highlight that's a really fun thing that can be done um, both online and in the classroom is a flip hunt. Um, and this is a little digital scavenger hunt that takes place on Flipgrid. Uh, so you create a set of tasks that you want students to use um, and then challenge them to show what they know using a video response. So this is just two examples. So for example, um, a skeletal system flip hunt. So getting them to uh, do a flip group response on wiggling your phalanges. So testing actually, do they know what their phalanges are? Uh, and then sing and act out head, shoulders, knees and toes using the names of the bones. Uh, so this is just one idea. And again, these instructions can be just um, put straight into Flipgrid uh, and then get the students to respond that way. Uh, and again, equally um, doing a book scavenger hunt as well. So you could actually get them to uh, go through a particular book or several books uh, and search for particular things within that as well. So that's always a nice thing uh, to be able to go back through. Um, as well, I did say that I'll, I'll share this out with you, um, but there's also resources um, with lots of ideas to get going uh, and then that teacher guide to refer back to. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, and I'm just going to jump back into Flipgrid now, is that with any of these responses as well, um, you've also got the option to add in topic guests. So if you want other people to be able to respond to that, uh, then you can do that as well. So they don't have to just be part of it. Um, whenever you do decide, if you decide to use Flipgrid, I'd always recommend exactly the same way that I did with my working from home one, is that as a teacher, always record your own response first. Um, one of the big things that we've seen during distance learning is that our students more than ever are missing seeing our teachers' faces. Uh, so being able to have a response that they can actually see that you're taking that risk as well to record your voice, um, you do have that option there as well. Um, and again, just one thing uh, that I didn't highlight is that within that topic option as well, um, that you can, you have noticed that you've got that option to use Nearpod. Um, so if you are using Nearpod already, you'll notice that when you go on and create a lesson, So when I tap on to create a lesson and then add a slide, one of the options for adding in a activity is to add in a Flipgrid. So I can actually embed the Flipgrid directly on there. And um, that means the students will be able to see um, the responses through. So you'll see insert the Flipgrid teacher URL. So again, if I just jump back to my Flipgrid here, oh, this one, and tap on my grids, then I can go on and I can see my, so if I go share, then I've got that Flipgrid link that I want for the teachers to have access to. So that's my URL here. Um, and then I've also got my students' URL, so what they're going to access when they go on. Um, and you can then go ahead and add that in. Um, and what that means is that the students will then be able to respond to that particular topic directly within a Nearpod lesson. So you'll see that once that's, that's been added, that Flipgrid response then appears so I can preview what that looks like. So you'll see this is what my students will see when they're in a Nearpod lesson. So it's nice to have that integration there. Just like so, so that's directly embedded through and they can actually add that response without having to leave Nearpod to do that. Um, so I know some of you were on the Nearpod training earlier, uh, so that's always just worthwhile jumping back in to mention as well. 
Um, and again, for example, if I just jump into this, say hello uh, on Flipgrid, when I do record a response to the topic, um, you'll notice that I've got a couple of options I didn't mention um, down the bottom. So on those video options, you do have that ability to add in a video clip um, from your computer um, or your device. So if you'd already recorded a video that you want to use, then you can easily just drag and drop and select that video through there. And you'll also know that you also have that ability um, to use screen record. So you could simply start a screen recording and then select the window. So I'm just going to select that one. And that's then going to record my screen um, and anything there that I'm working on. Um, so it would also be recording my voice as well. Um, and I can do that um, if I want to. Um, so that's always a nice way if students are doing something that they can actually add those responses in um, as well. So you'll see that that's then just recorded my screen um, and I can go ahead and tap on next if I wanted to. Um, equally, I can always add more in. Um, and then again, um, on this right hand side, if you want to show that topic response. So when you're recording, if you can't remember exactly what it was, those instructions can, will always appear on that right hand side, as well as that option to add in a sticky notes. If you want to add any sticky notes on your video, you've got that option to do that. Um, as well as I mentioned that simple upload video option there. So does anyone have any questions on using Flipgrid that they want to ask? Uh, Isabel, yes, the teach uh, the students will be able to see the teacher's response video, even if they can't see student to student, because it's only students that they can't see. They'll always see a teacher's video. Any other questions? Feel free to unmute yourself um, or pop it in the chat. So if there's no other questions, what I'd love you all to go and do now is to actually go and set up your own Flipgrid. Uh, so just so that you've actually know exactly how to go about setting that up. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen again. So again, for this, just simply going on to Flipgrid and then all you need to do is tap on Educator Sign Up and then use Sign Up with Google. This just means that you don't need to remember any passwords or anything like that. Um, already, if, you're, if you already do have an account, then obviously you can use already have an account. Um, but just use Sign Up with Google there and then sign in.
And then once you're signed in and you've created your account, the first thing that it's going to ask you to do um, is to create your first grid. Um, so it'll usually pop up with a screen that looks like this as soon as you've set up your account. So give it a name, so name it your class um, so that you can know that you can always come back to use it and you can always change it as well. And then set up your grid uh, for school emails so that they can um, sign in to be able to access it that way. Uh, and then you can customize that flip grid so that it's relevant. Uh, so you might like to use uh, the name of your school uh, or your class or even just your teacher name as well there. And then simply tap on next. And again, next, because that's just to verify that it's the correct school email address. Uh, and then that grid is ready. So at that point, you'd simply tap on go to your grid. And then on here, you can customize your grid if you want to, just using that pencil in the right hand side. Um, so if you scroll down, you've got that option to see um, notifications. And I know that this is one that Graham always tells me to make sure um, that you're aware of is that you will get email notifications when new students post videos. Um, so it's up to you, but you might decide to limit those videos, uh, those emails, sorry, when those videos come through. Um, and then you can give students that option to download and share their videos after they've created them, uh, or you might like to turn that option off. Um, and again here, this is where you can personalize what your um, grid view looks like. So you'll see here that there's a range of different um, themes that you can choose from. So I'm just gonna go with that one. And I can then just tap on update grid to do so. And then have a go at either setting up a new topic from scratch um, or feel free to explore the Disco library um, and find a lesson topic, a book talk, a conversation starter, one of them that you could use um, and assign as a topic um, for your Flipgrid. So you can choose one of these, maybe even to do a simple book talk. Again, you can see that response is there and then simply just select your grid to add, and then press add. And if you wanna make any changes to either the recording length or the prompt, you can do that and then simply tap on update. Yeah, so Graham, the notifications. Um, so within my grid, if I just tap back and go on my class here, where that pencil is in that top right corner, that's how I edit. And then I just need to scroll down to features and then notifications is just here. So I wanna make sure that that is off to never or daily dependent uh, on when you want those notifications coming through. And then if you've been able to create it and you want me to um, see your grid, then please feel free to share the link um, to your flip code. Um, otherwise, feel free to spend this time uh, just going through that disco library to, to share and look.
thanks for joining. Yeah, if you need to go, um, you're welcome to. Um, thanks for joining. I will send um, through those uh, links so that you've got access as well. So I've just put the link to the slides uh, so that you can view those as well.